Ready? I'd like to call the regular city council meeting to order on Tuesday, November 19th. Uh, at this time, I'd like to actually invite up uh, Latricia to, oh, I apologize. We're gonna reverse the order here, it's my fault. Um, first, we're gonna have an invocation by Kelly Berry uh, from African Violets of the Valley Christian Network. And uh, uh, Chaplain, Chaplain Berry, if you come forward. And then I'll have uh, Latricia come up as we introduce the uh, Pledge of Allegiance that we're going to have. So if you'd all rise, please. Mayor Price and members of the City Council, it is my pleasure tonight to bring you a special guest to do the Pledge of Allegiance. We have a young lady with us who one day had an unfortunate incident while she was eating and was choking on a piece of food and our City of Maricopa Fire Department crews responded and performed the Heimlich and, and saved her. They um, happened to run into her at a Fry's grocery store here in Maricopa a couple of weeks later where she got a chance to thank you and display something that she had just learned to do. And so she's gonna share that with you this evening. So if I can have Josephine Smith, the daughter of Representative Steve Smith, join me with the members of the Maricopa Fire Department. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mayor Price. Thank you, Josephine. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly, as well. Beautiful. Thank you. This time we'll move to the roll call, please. Councilmember Brown? Here. Councilmember Chapados? Here. Councilwoman Gussie? Here. Councilmember Kimball? Councilmember Potter? Here. Vice Mayor Farrell? Here. Mayor Price? Here. Mr. Mayor, we have a quorum. Great. Uh, we don't have any proclamations, acknowledgements, and awards at this time, so that'll move us to item four on the report from the mayor. Um, we'd like to first turn over the time to Councilman Potter, who has an announcement on behalf of Forest City. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, as the mayor said, on behalf of For Our City, Mar Maricopa nonprofit organization made up of civic, business, uh, and faith-based organization, of course, the, the city ma community members at large, um, we're having a community potluck on Thanksgiving Day, it's, uh, it's a potluck. Everyone's invited to bring their favorite dish. Uh, but if you don't have a dish to bring, don't let that stop you. It's more to get along with, uh, be, um, meet new friends and neighbors, and just join and hopefully have a good time. And uh, yeah, just bring whatever you like. And uh, it'll be 10 a.m. to noon at Maricopa Rotary Park. And we're also seeking volunteers. 
So if you're interested in volunteering and help set up, break down, and clean up, that'd be fantastic. Um, the executive director of, of for our city, Maricopa, Eric Latch, is also available. And it'll be up on the fa Facebook page of Forest City and Maricopa as well. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, at this time, I wanted to announce that we are planning on having a uh, town hall here uh, with Congressman Paul Gosar. That will be held Tuesday, November 26th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, all are welcome to attend. And we're going to be talking about the uh, 347 grade separation project, the Lower Santa Cruz River Alliance, the I-11, and other issues uh, that any residents would like to uh, discuss. So this event is open to the public. We encourage you to come. It's a great way to uh, be able to network and talk with your uh, elected representatives. Um, I think it's also important to note that uh, this is a person who is no longer a member of our district, but feels so strongly on these issues that he keeps coming back to help us. And both Kirkpatrick and uh, Gosar have, have working, are working very closely as a team to help the city of Maricopa. It's something we really appreciate. So again, that is Tuesday, November 26th at 6.30 here in these chambers. So if you can come, we'd love to have you. Uh, last thing on the uh, item here for me to talk about is uh, Chief Stahl. Now, Chief Stahl has reluctantly made it out of jail. Just kidding, Chief. We're happy you're out of jail. Um, as you know, jokingly, we had a, a very humorous challenge here a few weeks ago. Uh, we challenged the city of Maricopa to reach $100,000 in taxable receipts uh, in which uh, they could prove that uh, Chief Stahl could get out of jail. That was his bond. And I uh, just would like to announce that the city, incredible. City of Maricopa responded, and uh, they must like you, Chief. They wanted you. They wanted you out and about doing your job because the official total as of tonight at 5:30 p.m. was $295,056.38. So a big congratulations to the Chief, but even bigger congratulations goes to our citizens of this city who have done a great job in helping step up and do their part. And we know it's tough to shop local and. And we appreciate that, though, and, and every, every dollar and dime helps uh, move the city forward. And so thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, with that, that concludes the mayor's report, and we'll move on to the report from the city manager. Mayor Council, first I'd like to make an announcement. Um, for several months, we've had an interim fire chief, Brady Leffler. I would like to officially recognize Brady as our new fire chief, effective yesterday. So Brady, stand up. Brady's done a tremendous job, and he's going to do great for things for this city. So welcome, Brady. Um, next, I'd like to announce that December 3rd, our next council meeting, uh, during the work session, we will be having a holiday tree lighting ceremony. All the public is welcome to come. Pro approximately 6.30, probably. We're going to light the tree, have cocoa, hot cider, and cookies. So everybody's welcome to come and watch the tree light up. And then finally, um, I have a thank you card for the mayor and council from Miss Jennifer, okay, Smested? Smested. Smested. Uh, Miss Arizona, apparently she's from Maricopa. She wanted me to give the council <laughs> <laughs> this card. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you. Wow. Here's, here's the card. <laughs> Uh, if, if I may, it says, uh, thank you for, thank you so much for your, all of your support. Love the city of Maricopa. Uh, Jennifer Smeestead, Miss Arizona 2013. So thank you, Jennifer. Appreciate it. And with that, Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, Brady, welcome to the team. Thank you very much. And uh, to uh, Miss Smeestead, uh, she doesn't have the privilege of living here, but she did an excellent job of representing us as, uh, as Miss Maricopa. She was at everything, did a phenomenal job, and then went on to represent us very well in the Miss Arizona pageant to which she won, and then went on to the Nationals and competing in Miss uh, USA. So we're really lucky to have somebody of that caliber and stature that uh, went on to represent us so well here in Maricopa. So thank you. At this time, we'd like to open a call to the public. Uh, if this, there's members of the public who'd like to step to the podium and address the council. It's not a time in which the council typically responds to uh, calls, but uh, something we do like to listen to and we take into consideration everything that's said. So if you'd like to step forward, we encourage you to address us. Thank you.
Now the fun with that is going to be that um, we have another Shop With a Cop event happening. Uh, Honeycut Coffee is the entire day they're going to have different things going on. Um, we've got several different um, things going on with our police officers. Hopefully we'll have the K-9 unit there. We'll have um, our volunteer unit there, maybe our explorers and stuff to uh, help out throughout the day. Honeycut Coffee is donating 10% of all proceeds for that day to the Shop With a Cop program. They are also raffling, every hour they're going to raffle gift cards from Honeycut Coffee and also um, they're going to be raffling off uh, pizzas from Papa Murphy's. So we have two local companies stepping up on that day and again it is Shop Local Saturday so it's a great opportunity to really do something in Maricopa. Thirdly, and, and this is what gets to be fun about what I get to do with this, um, when I get to look at the numbers for um, donations and the, the different programs that have been going on for the Shop with a Cop event. Um, it just gets so exciting because we're still taking donations and our original goal was to raise $6,000 and to take a group of 35 children on a shopping experience for the holiday. Well, that's changed. Um, our goal is $6,000 I was up here a couple weeks ago and I said we had raised $6,420. Um, as of yesterday, we're at $9,105. And they've upped the number of children that we're going to take. I don't know the exact number. I, I'm going to guess that we're probably going to be close to 45 or 50. Um, and, it's, and it's just going to be a very fun experience. The additional monies will go in, back into things like a backpack drive in this city. Um, and we're looking to also help the Optimist Club with their uh, support of the Head Start program during the Christmas season. So I do want to just let everybody know these things are still going on. You can still make donations. And all this money goes back to the kids in this community. So thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, City Council, my name is John Beatty. I haven't been uh, attending as good as I have as I used to, but I did want to let everybody know that I do have pocket constitutions, and I give them away. So anyone who wants one, just contact me after the meeting. Thank you, John. Anyone else? <laughs> good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. Uh, my name is Henry Wade, and uh, I just wanted to come and thank you and thank the City of Maricopa. Unfortunately, actually, you, you weren't here. <laughs> you guys were in Seattle. But we did host the uh, state uh, Arizona Democratic Party here for their state quarterly meetings at the uh, high school. And uh, we had uh, over 200 delegates, uh, actually 350 represented with the proxies and what have you. Uh, they were very impressed with uh, Maricopa and the PAC as well as the Ultra Star Theater. We had a function there as well that was very well attended, a good fundraiser. So I just wanted to let you know, you know that we had th these folks in the backyard. We made history here and that it has never been held here in Maricopa. And this is the first time in about 15 years that they've held a, uh, a meeting here. So it was, we were well represented. Uh, our restaurants and the hotel and everything were well represented. So I just wanted you to know it, it was a, a very good event. Thank you very much for everyone who participated and attended. Thank, Thank you, Henry. Appreciate it. That's exciting. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, briefly, we, we couldn't have PD showing us up, so we want to follow up and uh, say that on December 14th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the south parking lot at Pecana Park, we're putting on our uh, Toys for a Ride event. So you bring in an uh, unwrapped new toy and you get a free ride, in a, you know, a small trip or a quick trip around the city uh, in a fire truck, and that will benefit the local food bank uh, as well as in, in concert with uh, the, obviously the fire department and the uh, uh, professional firefighters of Maricopa. Uh, again, that's for December 14th from 9 to 1. Thank you very much. Thank you, fire. Anyone else? Seeing no one, we'll go ahead and close the call to public this time. Thank you very much for all of your announcements. There's a lot going on in the city. This time we'll move to uh, item seven on the agenda, which is the minutes. Uh, can I have approval for 7.1 and 7.2, please? So moved. 
We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We'd now like to move to the public hearing, uh, 8.1. We have the mayor and city council shall hear a public comment regarding an annexation case, ANX 13-01, approximately 831 acres of land generally, generally located south of Maricopa Castle Grand Highway, north of Teal Road and west of Russell Road within Pinal County. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to open the, uh, the public hearing. Uh, you are welcome to come to the stand and speak to us on this topic and this topic only. And I have a speaker card, and so I'd like to invite Court Rich to please come forward, uh, after which I have no other cards, and so if you'd like to speak to the topic for or against, please do so. Court. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, for your records, Court Rich on behalf of the landowner tonight. Um, First of all, congratulations on this new incredible facility. It's my first time appearing before you in this building and, you know, having been, uh, I don't know, we've been at churches and high schools and the global <laughs> facility and wherever we've been, this is amazing. So you guys should really be congratulated. That's great. Um, obviously, we're in favor of this annexation. We're appreciative of staff working with us on this. We look forward to coming to you next month with a major general plan amendment that will follow up on some agreements that were reached in the past with the city and the landowner. Uh, so just look forward to, to um, completing this. It's an important annexation for the city. It helps you all get around the corner uh, and kind of fulfill your destiny of growth to the south. And, and, uh, and so I think that's important. Um, if you all have any questions at any point in time as we move forward, you know where to find me and I can certainly make the applicant available too. So thank you very much. I uh, look forward to seeing you on this soon. Thank you, Court. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? to the public uh, comment period or during the public comment period on this annexation. Dana, I believe you had something. Mayor, Dana Burkhardt, staff, uh, if I could read a Please. comment from uh, Board of Supervisor Chairman Stephen Miller. Uh, he did provide some comment late this <laughs> afternoon and asked that it be read uh, to the record. Uh, Per Chairman Miller, I see no benefit to the city of Maricopa at this time unless the developer is willing to bond the project and start development within the next 12 months. How does it benefit the citizens of the city of Maricopa? Uh, the added expense of public safety is there and is a burden to the taxpayer and is not needed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dana. Anyone else like to speak at this time on the annexation? Seeing no one, I will go ahead and close the public hearing. And we'll move to the consent agenda. Council, can I have a motion to approve? Consent agenda, please. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That moves us to item 10.1. It's an ordinance of the mayor and city council, the city of Maricopa, amending section 18-3-6 of the Maricopa City Code regarding firearms in the parks. This is for discussion and action. Chief Stahl. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. There really is no presentation on this. Uh, I had presented to you before on the need for this ordinance change based on the Arizona Revised Statute change. Uh, the legal unit uh, did the research and compared the current or what is being proposed as uh, the new ordinance is in compliance with most uh, municipalities throughout the region. Uh, what it does, for the citizens that are listening, what it does is it allows the city of Maricopa to remain in compliance with Arizona Revised Statute. It allows us also to, should we have special events where alcohol may be served and we want to prohibit weapons during those types of events, we can still do so. and, and enact our ordinance for that special event so and, and when we do that as the last event that we held we provided portable storage areas for those weapons so um, we will provide provisions should we restrict weapons in that in that event uh, if you have any questions I'm willing to answer if not I believe the ordinance is before you and pretty self-explanatory thank you council questions uh, Chief, I know that this has been a concern for many on both sides of the issue, uh, but again, just, just going along with what the state law says, so this is, if, as a city and at certain events, we're allowed to restrict, but we have to have areas in which uh, 
people can, can store those firearms safely. And, and we did that at the last event. As you said, uh, we had also asked you uh, if anybody had, had voluntarily done that. Um, the answer was no, if I remember correctly. Yes, uh, as well as the fact that uh, we also had separated alcohol uh, from the event and, and you had to, you know, be especially get in there. And so, you know, we felt we had control as best as possible. And so it seemed like our test case went really well. Uh, is there anything else that, that should be added to that? Uh, Mayor, uh, thank you for those comments. No, not really. As always, public safety is the utmost important to all of us as it is to, to all of you. We want to have those events be fun and still allow people to uh, express their Second Amendment privilege to to carry weapons should that event be conducive for that type of thing. Um, if we're going to restrict, we know what ways we can make that handy for them to restrict and still allow them to store their weapons, and we will be enacting those, those policies in okay. that fashion. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Councilwoman Chapados. To approve Ordinance 13-13. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Council. Uh, move to 10.2 is the resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Maricopa supporting the possible adoption of the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, the technical work group BART, uh, which is, I'm sure, is going to be spelled out for us, Paul. It's better than something. Uh, proposal for air quality as a means of reducing emissions at the Navajo Generating Station. As we talked with Mayor Smith, this is a really important issue. Um, so take it away. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, just a little background. The, the EPA is, is looking at reducing emissions and has focused in on the Navajo generating uh, station in the northwest corner of the state. Um, the, re the reductions would be very expensive and, and uh, really and heavily impact uh, the price of energy in Arizona because it would take possibly take this uh, generating station out of, out of production. Um, what they have now is what they call the better than BART. Um, the BART is best available retrofitting technology. That is what EPA has been looking at, and that would run about 544 uh, billion in um, I think it would be million in additional monies, um, and that is is just so damaging that the chances of uh, the power plant surviving are, are very low. They put together a working group. The working group is the, the TWG. Uh, this group came out what they call better than BART, better than the alternative. And what this resolution does is support this better than BART alternative uh, that EPA would adopt this rather than their $544 million alternative. Um, the importance of this is the fact that if this Navajo generating station is taken offline, uh, it will be pulled out of the, the power grid all power will go up. Uh, CAP, most of this Navajo generating power goes to CAP. CAP would have to buy its power elsewhere. The spot market price in the, the, would go up. And, and ED3 buys their power on the open market. They have, they have some under contract and other stuff they buy on the open market. Uh, supply and demand, all the energy would go up and that would directly impact the residents of Maricopa as ED3, ED3 tried to uh, uh, supply us with power as cheap as possible. Uh, so, therefore, it's really important. We, we do have an opportunity to impact the federal government. EPA is seriously looking at this better than BART proposal, and we believe it would be so very important. Right <laughs> well, that's not me. I, <laughs> be very uh, important that we show our support for this uh, better than BART alternative by passing this resolution, and then um, ask the mayor to uh, forward this on in a letter to the EPA, and, and so with that, we uh, staff urges the approval of this resolution. Council, questions on this? Uh, just, I, I've been at a lot of things, a lot of meetings uh, regarding this, and, and uh, uh, Paul's absolutely right. If, if the federal government shuts down the Navajo Generating Station, uh, it will severely impact the residents of Maricopa and Pinal County, um, pretty much the entire state of Arizona. Uh, this plan, as it's proposed, has two people uh, backing out. There are multiple owners. There are three stacks, um, and there are multiple owners of this. Um, those 
two of those owners that would basically accumulate off of one stack um, is the state of Nevada and the state of California, and they would back out so that it would shut down one of the, genera the, the station's generations, uh, but it would still provide enough power for Arizona. Um, in doing so, it would keep things as we know them, or at least close there too. Uh, but shutting it down would cause a huge loss of jobs in the Navajo Nation, uh, one of their main sources of income. And uh, like I said, I, mean, I think prices are high enough here in the uh, city of Maricopa from water and power. I certainly don't think we want to see or encourage that to go up. So I would, I would uh, uh, move that we support this resolution, Council. Um, and it, it's only it's only one step, and hopefully the EPA will listen to us. But uh, um, it, it is a it is step in the right direction. And, and, and so Mr. Mayor, if, if you could make a, a note that we want to uh, correct and make sure it's 544 million and not my B. Thank you. 544 million. Million. Um, yeah. Also, Paul, there is a there is a way for each of the citizens to register on the EPA their thoughts for or against this proposal. Um, do you happen to have that information? I mean, I'm looking here right now. If not, something hopefully we can get put on the website uh, because I think it's, it's something we should put a link to uh, so each citizen can go and register. The EPA will be looking at this very, very shortly before the end of the year and that uh, public comment period ends quickly. So uh, if it's something you're in support of seeing the, the better than BART proposal and not the shutting down of the station, we'd encourage the, uh, the populace to do so. Well, with that, uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And then finally is 10.3, and that's the ordinance of the Mayor and City Council uh, amending Section 2-52 of the Maricopa City Code regarding the resignation of other office or position and providing for severability and the effective date thereof. This is for discussion and action. Mr. Mayor and members of the council, uh, traditionally we had a, the, we've, the state has had a resign to run requirement that for paid elected officials who are um, running for a different office uh, further than one year out from the end of their term must resign, must resign to run uh, once they announce their candidacy. This is a simple change at the state level that changes it from announcing their candidacy to uh, filing their paperwork and, and which is a, a more definitive uh, measurement of when they begin their campaign. So the, the, the simplest change in this is, is changing the statute from uh, you, have to, you must resign to run if you're a paid elected official uh, running for a different office and uh, you file your paperwork further out than one year of the end of your term. And so what this does is this aligns city code with state changes in state uh, statute. Okay. So, so again, so it's, it's just a, it's aligning the city code to bring it in into to compliance and conformance with the state, and it just says that instead of from an announcement perspective of resigning to run, once you file your paperwork, you'd have to resign to run. Correct. If it was beyond one year. Yes. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Council? Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Well, thank you very much. That concludes our meeting for this evening. And uh, with that, I just need a motion to move to E-session, please. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We'll see you in two weeks.